what's more glamorous than a supercar? Answer, a convertible supercar. The trouble is that they sometimes come with a few compromises. Sometimes that is, but not always. Welcome to the McLaren 570S Spider. So what are the main reasons that you would buy the open top brethren of a standard hard top supercar? Some people like it because it can be seen more easily as you turn up outside the latest cool club. Not really my thing, but I love it because you just feel so much more in touch with the surroundings that you're travelling through. You can see the mountains and the sky, or the buildings, or the trees above you. You can smell your surroundings too. Admittedly, that's not quite such a bonus if you're passing by the docks of Barcelona, but as this isn't smell vision let's imagine Jasmine and Bergamo wafting through the cabin. Go on, light a candle. Get in the mood. Most of the kit that you can see on this car is included in the £165,000 or $208,000 list price. Most notably, perhaps, the carbon ceramic brakes, which are fantastic. As well as the bucket seats, other options fitted to this car that I would definitely recommend include the lightweight forged alloys and the sports exhaust. Which brings us on to another of the advantages of a spider, namely the symphony of sounds that reach your ears. Now admittedly this 3.8 litre turbocharged engine hasn't quite got the voice of a natural aspirated Ferrari or something like that, but with everything set to sport and a fantastic ignition cut, this really has seemed to come alive in this spider. It's so much more engaging than the coupe in terms of its noise. If you're wondering about the stunning location we're in, by the way, it's called Montserrat. No, not the Caribbean island, but the mountainous and monastic area to the west of Barcelona, after which the island was named. So why wouldn't you buy a spider then? Well, some people say the looks aren't quite as good, but I don't think that's the case with this car. Yes, the 570 GT is probably still the real looker of the range, but I think with this convertible, this is actually better than the 570S Coupe because those buttresses are just brilliant. It looks like this was made for it. It's also worth taking a moment to appreciate the intrinsic beauty that a modern spider's roof can possess. Gone are the days when they looked like a deck chair after a hurricane. In the 21st century, they are feats of mechanical ballet. The 570 stows or protects in just 15 seconds and can perform at speeds of up to 25 miles an hour. It comes as standard in body colour, Sicilian yellow in this instance, but is also available in contrasting dark palladium, as you can see here. Now, the major reason for not buying a spider is because of the dynamics. The thing is though, McLaren's got a trick up the sleeve that means that's not really a problem in this car either. Time to pull over in a colour appropriate location for what Jennifer Aniston would call the science bit. Imagine for a second that this is a coupe. It's better. And imagine that it's not made by McLaren by another manufacturer that, say, doesn't use a carbon chassis, mentioning no names like Ferrari. In the coupe, it uses all the car, including the roof, to get its rigidity. Here's a bicycle to help make that point. Here's a simple, or perhaps that's simply terrible, drawing of a bicycle. What on earth is that? A wheel or an almond? To be fair, I do actually run with a saddle that high. Anyway, the standard bicycle gets its stiffness from the main triangle. If you took a hacksaw to the top tube, like this, then the whole thing would flex terrifyingly. Just to be clear, the top tube in this analogy is the roof of a car. What most car manufacturers have to do then, when they remove the roof, is add strength and therefore weight back in down here. McLaren, however, starts out with its monocell 2 carbon tub. So even on the standard hardtop, the roof isn't structurally important. It's like a bicycle designed from the outset without a top tube. So you see with the McLaren, even when you take the roof away, like that, it's still just as rigid because all the stiffness is coming from down there and you don't need to add any weight. Simple. What all that means is this has, well, exactly the same stiffness 
as the coupe, and it means it's got the same power as the coupe, it's got the same torque, it's got the same chassis settings, and it only weighs 46 kilos more. And because there is so little extra weight, the performance figures are nigh on identical too. 0 to 62 miles an hour is dispatched in just 3.2 seconds, identical to the coupe. And the Spider will reach 196 miles an hour with the roof down, or 204 miles an hour with the roof up. It means they've still been able to fit an aggressive coarser tyre because you're not getting any shape through the chassis. There's no, no wobble at all. You might think, well, this doesn't really matter to me, I don't drive that quickly, but the scuff will shake even at low speeds. It's just a horrible thing you don't want in a supercar particularly. Famously, McLaren doesn't put a limit to dip in their cars, despite the fact a lot of companies would say you absolutely have to have one. But the way they've got it to work without really suggests that, well, you don't need one. It's beautifully progressive over the limit. There's not going to be a 720S Spider for some time, we've been told that. So if you want an open top McLaren, this really is your only option at the moment. But I can't see why you'd want anything else. Of course, this is not the first time that McLaren has produced a Spider and displayed the virtues of its carbon chassis. But at this price point, it becomes an even more distinguishing asset. What's more, in the 570S Spider, I think McLaren has hit something of a sweet spot. The performance, adjustability, usability, and engagement are all knitted together into an infectiously exciting whole. As you can probably tell, I loved it, and I would certainly have the spider over the coupe. On this occasion, there's simply no reason not to.